Well, after many, many years of shooting film, medium format, 35mm, I decided to get into large format. And a lot of you have messaged me over the years and said, when are you going to shoot large format? And I'm like, well, when the time's right. So, I've now got an intrepid 4x5 camera. And I've brought out with me 105mm lens, 5.6 Nikon lens. And that's what I'm going to be taking a photograph of, is that tree there. If I flick this little switch on the lens, it opens up the aperture and I can now see what I'm taking photograph of on the back ground glass here, but can't see diddly squat. Why? I thought it was strange, I still got the back of the bloody cap on the back of the lens. Now I can see, should be able to. So the next thing I've got to do is make sure this is all straight and level. I'm not going to go into, on this video, all the um, perspectives the camera can do. I guess you guys already know that, but I will cover that in another video. But this is real basic stuff for me at the moment to get used to this uh, type of photography. So I've got a cover to go over it so I can see the back of the glass properly. I've also got a little loop as well that I can attach and make sure I've got my focus in. Oh, it's pretty windy up here today. Right, on goes this thing. This is where I start looking like Superman. <laughs> oh, wrong way around. Take off. Gonna end up in Basingstoke. Oh, oh come on. It's like a kite. I need to have two pairs of glasses because I can't see that well. One. Where's the other set gone? On the back of the camera, I've got my little focusing wheel. It's very white. Oh, well, okay, I can see that. It's up to me to get my composition how I want it. So I think I focused in, got my composition. Let's bring that to aperture f22. Don't think this is the best place to come for my first shoot on, <laughs> on the outside. I should have gone in the woods where it's less windy. Oh, come on. Get on there, knobhead. Oh, man, my camera's moved. <laughs> That's my composition there. Um, and everything's upside down on topsy-turvy. So I've got the tree dead in centre. I've got most of the sky, uh, most of the grass, sorry, in the lower third, and most of the sky in the top and the tree dead centre. So uh, let's do a metre in, take the shot. Have that one done. So I've now got my composition. I've got my metre in. And on this holder, has got two little clips that just push over and it stops you pulling the, uh, accidentally pulling the film out. Pretty genius. This side is grey, so I'm gonna put this in. The film's already in there, emulsion side facing this way. I'm gonna slide this into the camera. The grey the gray slate there, the grey side, means that it's uh, unexposed film. And when I expose it, I'll just flip it around. I'll show you that in a second. So let's dump this in. Right, so make sure that my lens is now closed because that was open for focusing. That's closed. One eighth of a second, cable releasing. Everything looks nice and straight on this camera. In fact, the back looks a bit out of line, so I'll have to change the back now. out there. It wasn't straight, it was slightly tilting, so that'll just change the perspective that I want. Don't want that. Let's put this back on. Oh, Golden Bennett. <laughs> I just need to make sure that, oh, glad I did that because I wasn't in focus. Okay. Now, I'm back in focus. That really changed the perspective a lot there. Back in again. Lens, close the lens off. Oh, geez. I'm knackered already. So now I've just cocked the shutter. All I need to do is take the dark slide out, take my shot, put the dark slide back in. Lorry going by. Dark slide out, take the shot, done. Dark slide in the opposite way, so I know that that's an exposed piece of film. Why is it not going in? There it goes. A 
block that off. So now I know that that's exposed. The film is underneath there, but because it's black and not grey like that side, that's exposed. So the next shot will be this one. So it's pretty windy up there. Before I carry on with the location filming and what I was up to, I just got to say a massive thanks to YouTuber and brilliant photographer, gentleman and a scholar, Martin Henson. He sent me this wonderful print. My wife was watching one of his videos. She loved it and she said to me, that's a lovely print. And I told Martin, I said, uh, my wife said, one of your prints were lovely. And it, he sent it to her. So um, from me and my wife, Martin, Emma, Thanks a lot, mate. Brilliant. If you want to see Martin's stuff, I'll put a link in the description on this video. So I'll just quickly show you some of the struggles that I had with this large format camera when I first got it in the week. Assembling the camera was no problem at all. I just followed the instructions here. Uh, it's an Intrepid camera. I just followed the instructions, got it set up, and I didn't want to do any fancy stuff with it. I didn't, didn't want to do any tilt swings and all that stuff. I just wanted to use it basic, and I can learn that over time as I grow more confident using the camera. So once I've got the camera on, on its rails here, or on a stand, what comes with it, um, it was then time to think, okay, well, I've got that bit sorted out. Now I've got to try and figure out how to load film. So the first thing that I had to try and master in the dark was trying to load a sheet of film of this Ilford 100 Delta pack into the film holder. So I took the one film holder into the dark. I took the pack of film also, obviously, into the dark room as well. Um, and, and I've never done this before. So I, had to, I opened up the box and there was a, like a box inside a bag and then, and then a bag, it was a folder inside the bag. I thought, blimey, where's the film? Once I found it, I thought, okay, I'm in the dark and I'm feeling around. I pulled the film out, I got the holder out and I'm like, okay, and I'm trying to put it in. And then I wasn't quite sure if I had the emulsion side the right way round. I'm sure I did. And then I thought, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet. So I pulled out a piece of film, which is here. So I wasted one sheet of film, but it's not a waste, it's to practice on. And I'll keep that for any um, practices that I need to do. So I'll turn the lights on, got the film holder out, and I practice loading it, practice feeling for these little tiny grooves at the top here, which should be on the top right hand side when you're loading it into the film holder. So I just did a little tiny practice and that helped me out after about 10, 15 minutes of practicing. I then went back in the dark room, uh, pulled out another piece of film and then loaded it into the film holder. I only loaded one sheet of film into the film holder just for one simple photograph. And I took a photograph of the pumpkin and the lamp behind me, which some of you might have seen on Instagram. The one I posted on Instagram was 35 mil. That was shot on, on Olympus OM20. But I thought I'd try the same composition with the five by four. So once I got set up, it took me actually ages to try and get a focus through this camera. My back was hurting. It took, I, I, seriously, it took me about three hours to get this photograph taken um, from learning how to load the film, putting it in the camera, focusing the camera, getting it right. Um, and eventually it got time when I went back in the dark room, took the slide out, went in the dark room, and then it was time to develop that sheet of film. This is the developing tank that I'm using here. It's an SP445 um, from Steerman Press LLC but it's um, quite a common darkroom tank, I believe, for, um, for developing your film. So then I had to then go back into the darkroom and put that film inside this tank for developing. Again, I wasn't quite sure, so I practiced with my um, practice sheet there. So just take it out and inside you've got these little, I've got two little slides inside, so this can load, what, one, two, three, four sheets of film. Um, and you just slide your film onto here, put it back inside the tank, put the lid on, and then go in your kitchen and uh, pour the chemicals through there, develop the film the normal way. That wasn't too bad. Gorgeous day today, I hope these come out as nice as I think they're going to come out. Um, we'll soon see when we get back. But do you know what? I've always said on my channel, if they don't come out, I've enjoyed myself up here. Breathing in all the fresh air, chatting to a few people um, on and off the, well, off the camera, and uh, took some photographs. If they don't come out, well, 
so be it. I'll have to come back and do it again. It's just uh, you know trial and error to see how we get on. Right, where's my car keys? And going forward with my journey, I've had this. I've had this book, and I, I shit you not, I've had this book for about six or seven years, and uh, I've only just got into large format. I found it in a in a charity shop, about fifty p or something like that, and it's now come to use. If I go look through the book, here you can see uh, the page on camera movement. So over time, I can learn exactly what all these camera movements do. It gives me the rise, fall, slide, tilt, the swings, and it also gives me um, illustrations and diagrams of what each movement will do. So I suppose in time I can start playing around with these when I feel a bit more confident um, in shooting large format and playing around with those um, controls on the camera. And the only thing I forgot to get was when I developed my negatives, I then realised I ain't got no um, negative sheets to put these <laughs> to put these negatives in. So they were sitting there on the side and I thought, oh no, what am I going to do? How am I going to keep them protected? Well, I remember that I had this photo album that I kept. Um, and I've had this for years and it's been in the garage um, stored away. And I went out and got it and uh, open it up. And there I've got four sheets, four negatives, four by fives in there. So they fit in there comfortably. So I'm gonna be using all of these and this folder for my four by five negs and uh, reference each one as to what I did on the shoot to get the photograph that I took. So that was quite handy. So you've seen the DSLR scans already and here are the negatives on the light box. I developed these in James Lane Zone Imaging Labs 510 Pyro and I'm well chuffed. A little overexposed I feel, but it's the start of a new journey for me and one I think I'm going to enjoy. I do have Intrepid's in larger kit full of 4x5 and I'll get using that in future episodes when I feature the camera. I did notice a few dust spots on the legs and a couple of scratches around the edges and also a slight leak on the edge too, but that's something I need to get used to, handling the film and learning how to keep the dust away from the film backs. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching and if you're into large format photography and can give me and others any tips or pointers from my first time out with the camera, let us know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Cheers.